Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's meeting of the PAC. Um, today, the Arts Commission Public Art Committee and Metro Art staff are joining by conference call. In a moment, we'll call the roll of all the members present. Um, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Metro Nashville YouTube channel within two business days after the meeting. All votes will be made by roll call. All action items voted on at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in-person meeting of the committee. Now, I encourage all of you to stay muted unless you're actually speaking. Um, if any committee members are having some technical difficulties, please let us know. Anybody, I know Campbell's having a little trouble, but otherwise everybody's good. Okay. Well, I'm going to call the meeting to order and I'm going to do a roll call. Um, Alejandro Lasso. Omar Ibuko. Is he on? Okay. Oh, Omar is present. Paul Collins. Present. David Walker. Um, I believe David is an attendee currently, so I don't know that he can speak. Uh, it doesn't look like his audio is connected. I, I cannot promote uh, David to a panelist. It doesn't look like he has video or audio connected. That would be great if you could do that, Michael. It looks like he might have just connected. Uh, WebEx still isn't giving me the option to promote him. Um, if that changes, I will, okay? Okay, would it be possible to unmute both David Walker and Marie? They are unmuted. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay, and last, um, Jim Smith. Did he say present? Oh, Jim, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm here. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, now I need to call for a motion um, about the meeting. Is that meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the body, and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans. Considering the COVID-19 outbreak is permitted to Governor's Executive Order Number 16. Um, we need someone to look to this effect and remember to state your full name for making a motion or a Make a motion. Who is that? Paul Collins makes the motion. Okay. Alejandro second the motion. Now I'll have a uh, call for the um, people west. Is she make it on? Um, she is still having some technical difficulties and she's going to be trying from her laptop here. Okay. Alejandro Asierto? Uh, yes. Omari Booker? Paul Collins? Yes. David Walker? Yes. Jim Schmidt? Does Jim vote? Uh, Jim is actually technically ex officio, so. That's right. Never mind. Never mind, Jim. <laughs> All right. Motion, motion passes. Um, I'm moving. Wait. Where am I? Okay. I'm now going to pass the meeting over to Dan for full public public. Well, because of our strange virtual life, we had to do kind of a upward reversal of what we would typically do, which is introduce everyone to our new public art committee chair, Jane Alvis. And I will say Jane is, um, she is an amazing champion for all of our work. She is, uh, has been a devoted, um, uh, excuse me, committee member for many years. She has served on PAC previously and she brings um, a, a ton of institutional knowledge and she really has a passion for public art and supporting the work we do. So I am so grateful that Jane has agreed to serve in this capacity and I'll let you all in on a little secret. Jane has known me since I was the lowly intern. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we go way back and she knows the, um, the robust history of public art and metro arts and i'm just i'm thrilled i think she's going to round off our really spectacular committee so thank you jane for your time and i also have to share some very sad news with you all we are going to be um 
uh, lose a poll at the beginning of next year, so 2021. Um, and Paul, I just wanted to publicly thank you for the thoughtfulness and, um, you know, you are so present and engaged in every meeting. Uh, you know, even in, in the year you have served, you have really transformed our work and made a big impact in the ways that we think about um, decision making and equity and power structures within these public art calls. So I just want to thank you and let you know that we are so grateful for the time you have invested in, in public art and this committee because you know it's a, it's a big investment. So thank you. Thanks, man. And that being said, y'all, it is so hard to find working artists to serve on this panel. People are busy, they wanna to apply to things. So that is always our challenge. If anybody um, from the committee has a colleague or connection that they think would um, serve well in this role and be interested, please email me. Um, we're always trying to keep kind of a running list of folks who um, align with our values and would be interested in serving in this capacity. So please let me know if you think of anybody. All right, we can go to the next slide. We are going to dive right into our action items. And first mm -hmm. uh, presenting today will be Ann Wesley. Well, good morning. It is great to be with you all, albeit virtually. Um, today, I'm very pleased to share with you the recommendations from the selection panel for Artworks Phase 2, our art lending library that we've been talking about and working on for the past year. First of all, a big thank you to the selection panel um, that included Donna Gilliam um, as chair, David John Walker, Alejandra Arcierto, Paul Collins, and our library representative, Catherine Bryant from the Bellevue Library. You all gave a lot of time and energy to this important role, and it is most appreciated. And I must give an extra shout out to David John Walker. Um, he served on the review panel, not only for the Art Lending Library, but also for the special edition I Voted sticker. So kudos to him. Thank you. Um, to give you um, a quick recap, um, you know, at the end, we're going to be having an action item um, to um, a uh, motion to recommend um, approval of the 60 artworks and artists um, for this collection. But before we do that, we wanted to give a quick overview of the project, our goals for supporting artists, and the initial evaluation that we have done um, to consider the diversity of artists um, represented in the collection and the economic impact to artists. Um, as you um, probably um, recall, Artworks Collection is part of the larger Metro Public Art Collection funded with percent funds. What sets it apart is that it is smaller scale art, artworks. Um, these are by local Davidson County artists, all of them, and these artworks are placed in Metro buildings for all to enjoy. A recommendation for such a collection was included in the Public Art Community Investment Plan from 2017. Phase 1, which we called um, 40 for 40, celebrated Metro Art's 40th anniversary with the purchase of artworks from 40 local artists for two Metro buildings, the Historic Courthouse and the Metro Office Building. Well, based on the very positive response we received, we had always intended to expand the artworks collection, but hadn't yet determined what shape that would take. Would it be a the same model, but simply taken to a different Metro building, or would it be something entirely different? One of the ideas that we had been considering was the idea of an art lending library. Nonprofits, public libraries, and art museums have been partnering in various ways for years to do this. But then, as 2020 unfolded, we immediately began to see how artists were being impacted by work and exhibit closures and other devastating losses due to the tornado and the pandemic. So we started having some serious conversations um, with the Nashville Public Library staff about how we might establish an art lending library, whereby um, artwork purchased from local artists 
could be checked out um, by anyone with a library card. Well, they responded enthusiastically, and we determined that two regional branch libraries, Southeast and Madison, would be the sites for the pilot program. Uh, you all um, approved an acquisition budget of 100,000 for Artworks Phase 2, which will be used at these two pilot locations and any future locations. Next slide, please, Grace. Well, when we presented this proposal um, at the August PAC meeting, you all gave us some great feedback on how to best support artists, which helped us to frame the call and also make decisions um, within the selection panel meeting. We had a lot of discussion about purchases through galleries, and ultimately we decided that we could better provide relief to artists if the entire purchase amount went to the artist rather than being shared with a gallery. Keep in mind, the typical price range for lending library artwork was 300 to 500, and we set a maximum of 700. That price range aligns better to a direct sale with an artist. We also discussed the number of submissions that we would allow uh, per artist. The consensus was that three submissions would be allowed per artist, but that only one artwork would be purchased from a selected art artist. In this way, we can include more artists in the collection. Another way to include more artists um, is to pass for the time being on current um, artworks artists who applied. Future selection panels can revisit this. As the collection grows, we may wish to selectively include additional purchases from artists that are already in our collection. Then we also talked about how to publicize the call to artists. We wanted a wide distribution, and so we sent out notice to all the visual arts grantee organizations. We sent out a lot of targeted emails, and I know PAC members did this as well, and we appreciate that. And of course, it was included in all of our Metro Arts media. And we are very pleased with the results. We had 74 eligible eligible artists, most of whom submitted three artworks for consideration, and we had a lot of, of new names, um, artists for whom we had not um, previously funded and didn't have artwork from them in our collection or had even applied. So that was very exciting to us. Next slide, please. So after the selection panel made their recommendations, staff did an initial review of the information that the artists provided and evaluated it in terms of the entire collection. Particularly, we ask, is this making a significant economic impact on local artists? Are we expanding the diversity of artists represented in our collection? So here's what it revealed. Um, the artist, um, uh, purchase total uh, was um, $26,017 for all 60 artworks, and the average purchase price per artwork was $433.61. That falls right in line with the expected range we had of $300 to $500. For the artist resident residency, of course, these are all um, Davidson County artists. So that all 60 of those artists um, brought our collection total to um, 142 local artists, which re represents 80% of our collection. If you expand um, your look to Middle Tennessee or even to Tennessee, that um, percentage goes up even more. We had 24 of 35 Metro Council districts represented by the artist, 19 of 29 Davidson County um, zip codes. And, um, you know, as I looked at the path of the tornado, um, there were 12 artists who came from that um, area of North Nashville, Germantown, East Nashville into Donaldson that was so, so severely hit by the March 3rd tornado. Um, and another part of our submission form was some optional demographic information. And looking at that, um, it, we noted that 28 um, artists identified themselves as persons of color, 14 artists identified as low income household, 12 artists identified as people with disabilities, 10 artists identified as seniors, 
seven artists identified as refugees, immigrants, and finally six artists identified as LGBTQI. Um, so this, of course, you know, is information that is very helpful, but it was optional. So those numbers may be even larger than than that that was shown. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the things we were most pleased about were the artists who were new to Metro Arts. Um, as we looked back at our records, we determined that 55 of the 60 artists are artists who had not previously re um, received any Metro Arts funding. And this was from things like public art funds, um, but also Thrive and Restorative Arts projects. And we also noted that 44 of the 60 had never responded to a Metro Arts call um, or applied to funding at all. So that is really, really um, exciting for us that we are um, including more people and beginning relationships with even more artists. Um, next slide, please, Grace. So next, I'm going to go through, um, of course, since so many of you are on the pack, this is not new to you, um, but it's really great, though, to see all of the artworks side by side. So I've got 10 slides. It doesn't have all of the additional information, um, but at least you can see the image and the artist. So I'm just going to quickly go through those and give you a, a few seconds to, to, to look them over. Um, if everybody could make sure that they're muted, appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I, we are so pleased with the collection. So um, as it's come together, um, so I hope you all um, enjoyed seeing those. And if you have any questions about any of them, um, please let us know. We have, you know, of course, further information about all of them. And this brings us to um, our action that we're requesting. Um, we, of course, hope that all of those artworks um, are still available. Um, but of course, you know, we understand that an artist may have gotten an offer to sell one of those. So um, for that reason, um, we want to um, recommend all of these artworks for purchase, um, but also ask that you give um, staff the discretion to make artwork substitutions as needed. So that motion is um, staff request pack approval to purchase selection panel recommended <laughs> Artwork from 60 local artists for artworks phase two art lending library and give staff the discretion to make artwork substitutions as needed. I'll turn it back to you, Jane. Yeah, if anybody want to make a motion on that, please say your name first and same for the second. Paul Collins, I make a motion. David Walter, I second. 
Okay, now I'm going to do the roll call. But when, um, when I do call you, maybe you need to repeat your name when you vote. Um, Campbell West, she I, make it? Oh, she is. Um, Michael, would you mind um, either upgrading or unmuting Campbell West? Thank you so David, much. David, I see you have your hand up. Did you have a question or is that just? Thank you. Hey, this is Campbell. It seems like I was muted and I think I was just unmuted. Did somebody have their hand up for a discussion? I think David did, but I don't think he, I think it was. A mistake. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start over. Campbell West. Aye. Alejandro Acerto. Omari Booker. Yes. Paul Collins. Yes. David Walker. Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. All right, I almost forgot. Yes. And so um, I just uh, thank you for that um, for approval. I um, wanted to just outline um, our next steps. Um, so, um, this, of course, this um, recommendation from the PAC will go to um, the commission, the, the full board um, next week. And with that approval, um, we will move directly into um, getting the artwork um, purchase paperwork and the artwork pickup. And then in December, um, artist payments, um, art, artwork photography, um, the framing, and then um, the display planning. And then after the first of the year, we'll be fabricating the displays for the libraries, the plaques and the signage. Um, and we'll also be working on the um, transport um, cases um, and the artworks, getting all that delivered to the libraries. And at the same time, we'll be working with the libraries on their online library catalog. Um, as well as our own website um, development. And then sometime in the winter, we'll be launching our art lending library. Thank you all. Thank you, Ann Leslie. Amazing work. You know, Ann Leslie has put so much time and energy into this amazing pilot program. So great job, Ann Leslie. Thank you. Yeah, Ann Leslie, those were fantastic. I enjoyed looking at all those. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think now we'll turn it over to Trey Harden. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, guys. Um, so today I will be presenting our um, advisory panel recommendation and um, process for Kasi Gardner Senior Park. Um, so if we could go to the next slide. Um, just to recap, um, Kasi Gardner Senior Park is located on 1606 Jefferson Street, um, just across from Fisk University, um, One Drop Inc. And um, I guess oh, shout out to Amari also. Uh, woodcuts is kind of count cat a corner. Um, this is actually a picture of the wall that, um, as it looks as of this week, um, the budget that we have for the first installation is $50,000 coming from temporary artwork funds. Um, we're not limiting this to being a mural. Um, while it, it seems best fitted for a mural, um, we were open to ideas for 2D, 3D, and multimedia works as well. Um, we hope that with the installation, um, being temporary that they would last 18 to 24 months and um, we would rotate and, and kind of continue programming. Um, there will be a virtual grand opening that we learned about this week that will happen this coming Monday, November 16th at 9.30. Um, it will be, there will only be about 20 or so people in, in person. So um, I do not have a link for the social media um, or Facebook kind of live event yet, but I will try to send that out as soon as it's available. Um, we're also collecting some um, time capsule objects this week, which should be kind of a cool um, programming event. Next slide, please. Um, so for this project, we've come to you a couple of times and um, we're really trying to have a, a different kind of approach for this project. You'll see on the video I was on site, I just tried to do a circle um, so you could kind of see where the site is relative to the street um, and kind of uh, if you know Jefferson Street, you'll be able to kind of tell. I kind of zoomed in where Woodcuts and um, Fisk is. Um, so for this project specifically, we want deeper civic and cultural participation. 
um, in public art that is of and by the community. I um, I took the quote from Jyoti's Holding Up the Mirror white paper, um, a project in which the artistic format becomes a conduit for self or community expression rather than a product being offered to an audience. Um, so I think with this quote that that is featured in Jyoti's white paper um, that we commissioned, I believe back in 2016, I think it it speaks to a lot of you know the work we've done and, and a lot of the lessons we've learned um, specifically through working with with partnerships and artists and neighborhoods. Um, so the idea is to try and, and really give away some of our ownership um, that that we kind of have in this process and, and see if we can um, hand that over to the community and allow them to kind of really lead the process. Um, we also hope that with this first installation, we can kind of um you know pick up and, and create stronger partnerships and, and pick up a way to program the future installations um at this site so moving forward um next slide please um so these are the kind of key responsibilities that this advisory panel would have per se um they would have the typical selection panel responsibilities such as serving as a voting member of the panel um, reviewing and evaluating the call to artist submissions, selecting the semifinal artists, and participating in final artist interviews. Um, I think the key difference is in bold, where it says participate in project development with staff, and that is kind of the new part of this process that we um, we actually came to you all last pack meeting to ask for that um, slight change to our public art guidelines to allow for this development to happen. Um, so this would require about three virtual meetings um, with this advisory panel, and then um, we will also be providing our voting members with, um, and not Metro partners, with a stipend of two hundred dollars. Next slide, please. So the project development will be a a virtual meeting that will be an intro to the project and kind of a submittable survey. So in this meeting, we imagine reviewing the call to artists. Um, in terms of a, a kind of in a template form to showing the panel what our typical call to artists look at and then or look like and then we'll have these um, separate categories, which I'll show on the next slide where they can provide input. Um, so the idea would be to, to have that introduction meeting with them um, because of the time and the holidays and, and wanting to move quickly. We decided a survey would be more um, effective and then following up with each advisory panel member um, one on one to kind of gather that information and then reprogram it into the call to artists and then share that with the panelists and then the call to artists would be released to the public. Um, next slide, please. So these are the, the different categories um, that you'll often see in our car art, excuse me, that you'll often see in our call to artists that will be asking um, these panelists to kind of provide input on. So scoring metrics alongside staff will ask the panel to help us identify four to six categories and metrics for scoring. Um, typically, these are are set by us in advance and, and the panel kind of gets to choose from there. Um, specific project goals and vision, I think that's a really big one. Um, we're kind of asking directly, what are your goals for this project? What do you envision this site looking like? Um, also, our application requirements. Typically, we have our applicants respond with a letter of interest of the project, um, but I was thinking it might be more appropriate to have um, the panelists come up with a few short answer responses. That way, it's easier to kind of um, compare and contrast and, and really evaluate these submissions. Um, also, eligibility, while I'm, everything has indicated that this will be um, a very local call, um, we, we want to have you know, the option for the community members to add any additional requirements for eligibility, um, you know, whether that be something like the artist must have completed a project in this neighborhood within, you know, a certain amount of time, different things like that, um, just to make sure that that we're able to um, create a call to artists that that caters towards the type of artists that the community wants. Um, and then also setting community engagement and programming expectations. Um, this gives an opportunity for some of our, our panelists and partners to um, decide what, what does that look like? What are the kind of requirements and things we set ahead of time um, that the artist has to abide by? Um, and just to kind of set up a framework for different programming around the mural in the future or the, the artwork. 
And then the next slide, please. Um, so this is a rough timeline of, of kind of how we hope this will play out. Um, we'll be inviting people for the rest of this month and kind of assembling the panel. Um, in December and January is when we'll have those project development meetings with the advisory panel. So that's um, doing the intro to call to artists, um, having them complete the survey form and then following up with one on one interviews. Um, and then by January, we would like to have the call to artists ready to be released. And then um, we would be doing our initial reviews and semifinalist selection um, in February. And then ideally by March, we would have a final artist selection to bring back to the pack um, for your vote. And then April, we would be doing install. And um, while right now it's not appropriate, we're hoping in spring 2021, we can have um, another event to unveil the project and, and kind of invite the community back out if, if the, um, environment is permitting, I guess. And then the next slide, please. Um, so these are some of our proposed panelists. Um, Sean Giles is Assistant Director of Community Engagement at the First Museum. Um, he recently did some work with the North Nashville artists, um, with Thaxton specifically, and Alicia, but who were working on the, um, the voting, I, I forget the name, um, at this exact time of the installation. Um, but he's also done a lot of work with North Nashville artists and has that lens from the first. Um, so we thought he would be a, a great addition. Tim Nash will represent Parks as the Assistant Director of Parks Planning. And uh, he has also already been a part of the project team and we've worked with him quite a bit. Um, I'd like to bring Thaxton back. Thaxton, I don't know if you all remember, he served on the planning team for Kasi Gardner um, when we were kind of evaluating what, what this project might yield. Um, one of the key things that he was able to get out of that was multi-generational representation. Um, and that's something that I've always been kind of interested in, you know, being a little bit closer to, you know, that school age, that university age. I've always wanted to get those students involved. So um, we'd like to ask Courtney Adara Johnson and Jamal Sheets. Um, I've already spoke to Jamal a little bit, but we'd like to ask them for a graduate student or a senior that they would recommend. Um, just just to have someone who's not not too young. We don't want freshmen or people who are kind of just getting into school, but um, you know, having that connection to the students and um, the university art program specifically, um, we would like to continue. Um, Kasi Gardner the third or Keisha Gardner Beard. Um, they are the descendants, they are siblings and descendants of Kasi Gardner Sr. So especially for this first installation, I think it's very fitting to have them involved um, or someone else who represents the family involved um, on, the, on the selection panel. And then finally, Rashida from um, Gideon's Army and then Angel Adams, I've had a, a lot of conversations with over the past few weeks. She's a community organizer. I believe she recently did some organization around cleaning up uh, Little Park um, in the area as well. And, and she lives on Jefferson Street and is pretty connected. Um, and then we'd also like to reach out to Jump and have a representative representing their organization. Um, sorry, I know I've been kind of going nonstop. Does anyone have any questions or um, comments? Any questions for me? Okay. Awesome. I guess um, we are requesting PAC's approval of the selection process for um, Cassie Gardner Park in the panel, which we will also be, um, if you approve, we will be taking this to commission next week as well. Do anyone want to make a motion? I'll call to make a motion. Sounds like a great panel. Alejandro, I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, I'll call the roll. Um, Campbell West? Yes. Alejandro Acierto? Uh, yes. Amari Booker? Yes. Paul Collins? Yes. Walker? Yes. Thank you. Great, great stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. And next, I believe we turn it over to Atilio. 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'm really excited to bring to you Madison on my mind update. Um, and so can I have the next slide, please? So I just want to give you a quick reminder on what Madison on my mind is, um, but this project is being funded with an $85,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. And we were able to fund total uh, 20 total artists that live and reside in Madison. Atilio, can I interrupt you just one second? As yes, ma'am. Amari, I see your hand up. Did you have a question? Yeah, I didn't really have a question as much as a comment. I'm unmuted, right? Yes. Yeah, just um, the really just both of the first two projects, the um, the the collection. I was really excited to see that. Um, as of, of course, as a local artist working through COVID, that's that's been a. I think that would be really beneficial, or was really beneficial. And the second project, um, also extremely excited, just kind of wanted to chime in and um, say that I'm glad that that is happening. And anyone who's involved, please, uh, yeah, please reach out if, if I can help on any of those. Um, yeah, and anything in the process, that's that's a pretty special area. Okay. And um, actually where the park is being built is where I got, that was Smith's Barbershop. So from about <laughs> seven years old until I lost my hair, I got my hair cut. J that. Is that JT? Right there. So. Um, so yeah, just really excited to see that moving forward and um, yeah, anything that is needed, please reach out. Thank you, Amari. And I have to say, I have to give Trey uh, a magnitude of kudos for just being so innovative and proactive with Kossi. And all of these kind of nuanced ideas and suggestions he really generated. And so I think um, it's exciting and it's breaking the mold. And don't worry, Amari, we're gonna bug the heck out of you for a lot of stuff uh coffee related don't worry don't worry we're gonna take you up on that gracious offer thank you great well yeah thank you Alan. good work trey good work you all thanks thank you Atelio. back to our question is yours <laughs> it's all good i'm glad i'm right up his two cents in that was important um so okay, uh, just you know, eighty-five thousand dollar grant from any from the NEA, and we were able to fund twenty total artists that live and reside in Madison. Um, at this time, uh, the artists are working on their projects while also receiving creative support by our lead artist, Kristen Chapman Gibbons. The deadline for completion for the projects is set for December first, and we're really excited to uh, see the final results. Uh, however, in order to better serve our community and the artists, we decided to schedule an outdoor social distance event that would feature the participating artists. The event, Madison on My Mind Showcase, will be held on Sunday, December 12th from 12 to 3 at, at the 54 Community Center parking lots. Can I have a slide, please? So we were very fortunate to have been connected to 54 by one of our participating artists who is whose project is based on the community center itself. When we were made aware of 54's work, we decided to contact them and see if they would be interested in working with Metro Arts. 54 is a community center who predominantly serves the senior community. They provide exercise classes, cooking classes, activities, and meals to its members. But more importantly, they provide a place where other seniors have a place and a chance to interact with one another. However, due to COVID, uh, 54 wasn't able to serve its members due to the high risk level for seniors during a pandemic. Keeping them stuck at home, cut off from the normal activities they encounter with their friends on a daily basis. Um, I did want to interject these two images here. It's like this is obviously one of the art classes, but um, I have to hand it to 54. Um, these the other image there is the group zip lining, um, and they actually go do you know white water rafting and rock climbing. So these are very active seniors, and this center is really really uh, near and dear to their hearts. So it's really important for the senior community there. Um, next slide, please. So due to COVID, 54 then decided to make changes to the programming where they serve its members during this time by moving their exercise, cooking, and activity classes to online while also delivering meals to their homes. However, even then, this didn't solve the issue of personal interaction amongst its members. So they developed an amazing event called a beep and greet. A beep and greet is a drive through experience which is held on their property parking lot where members drive and follow a path lined with booths with music and a meal pickup. 
With this model, they found they could safely socially distance while also allowing their members to interact with their friends and the community center staff. After meeting with 50 Forward, we mutually agreed in partnering to create a larger scale version of a beep and greet for the entire community um, that will also show the uh, showcase the artists themselves that are participating in Medicine on My Mind project. At the event, we plan on featuring approximately 15 artists that include painters, singers, dancers, costume designers, and visual performers. Slide, please. Here are just some examples of some of the artists that um, will be participating. Um, this piece has already been done um, by Kayla Jenkins, a local resident in Madison. Um, as you can see, it's just a 24 by 6 uh, abstract painting. Um, the theme behind this is just, uh, it's the map of Madison itself. It's in the major roadways. Um, but at the same time, she pays homage to a lot of historical um, periods within the area. Um, and kind of you see the Native Americans, uh, June Carter and uh, Johnny Cash. Um, and then we have Amqui Station and then the railroad. So. Um, she really took time to look through the history and kind of, you know, bring out a aspect painting through it. Next, please. Next is one of our personal favorites. Uh, we will say this is the farm and Adele. Um, these individuals have an online uh, educational show where they have an emphasis on nutrition and they teach math and spelling and ABCs and whatnot um, through sing song. Um, however, at this time they are expanding and they're bringing in puppets into their fold. Um, here are two examples of the puppets. Um, as you can see, uh, the way they combined um, their ideas, they brought in vegetables and combined, uh, I guess, playing words with puppets. So this is a uh, Frank Snow Pea and Elvis Parsley. Um, and they also want to commission and, and, and uh, create a, a Johnny Cash crop. I mean, they have about like 20 puppets they want to do. do. It's fantastic, I love it. Um, so we're lo really looking forward to seeing their final project as well. Next one, please. And next, this is like probably like the cutest one of all, no disrespect to anybody else here, but um, this is the local Rhythm and Review Dance Theater uh, found in Rivergate. Uh, they have classes for teens through TOTS. Um, they're a community dance studio, very homegrown. Um, they have performances year round. They are very disappointed actually in speaking to them um, because of COVID, you know, their numbers fell off. They are struggling a lot. And the, and the dancers that they have now, you know, they really wanted to have some sort of recital. And this uh, Medicine on My Mind project and the event really opened that door for them. So they're really, really excited to partnering with us and we're really, really happy to have them. So we're really looking forward to seeing um, their inspirational dance uh, that they're gonna create as their project. Next slide, please. And then aside from that, um, another important initiative that we are working with with Medicine on My Mind is that we are also working with Todd Bressy, who is an ex expert in exploring the intersection of public art, placemaking, and city design, and how that affects a community. Metro Arts has worked with Todd in the past um, as a consultant in developing our community investment plan. With Todd, we are working on identifying deliverables for the community and how Metro Arts as an agency can better serve with the focus on strengthening Madison's current creative ecosystem. Our hope is that we can then also apply this strategy to other neighborhoods in the Nashville area to see what their needs are, find commonalities, and help target initiatives that will strengthen each micro creative ecosystem. And that is my update for Madison on my mind. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Atilio. That rounded off just all the amazing work that this team has been um, so diligently working on for the last few months. So thank you, Atilio. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, Van, I think you have some updates. I do. So just to recap, we have our virtual dedication of Classy Gardner Senior Park. Um, we, uh, Caroline, our executive director, will be giving remarks. That is happening 
um, the 16th at 9.30 a.m. It will be live streamed on Facebook. We will send that link to you all as soon as we have it. And then make sure if you can, if you can get out on the 12th, um, do not miss it, the Madison On My Mind Showcase. It's going to be a really fun, safe time, family-friendly, great event, um, a way to kind of mix it up because I know we're all feeling stir crazy. So that's from 12 to 3 p.m. in the 50 Forward Madison parking lot. And thank you all. I appreciate all the time you've given us. <clears throat> Hey, thanks everybody for being here. The staff, you guys just blow me away every time you do a presentation. So thank you for all your good work. And I'm looking forward to meeting some of you guys I haven't met before. Hopefully we'll meet in person, uh, maybe next time. Hard to, hard to tell. I know. <laughs> anybody else have anything? Okay, if not, then I will say that we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Stay safe and well. Thanks. See you all. See Have a nice day. Thank you, Michael. Have a good day. You do the same.